Hello, Jim Hodges here, Jack here. Jack's a two and a half year old German Shepherd, Belgian Malinois mix who came in to visit us for our residency program. He's done really well. Our owners primarily wanted to improve him on leash, ultimately be able to hopefully move him to off leash in certain conditions, try to avoid his cat and to listen to commands, have better leash control. All of those things are uh, perfectly within reach. If we do our part, humans are the li limiting factor in most cases, we have to say what we mean and mean what we say. The biggest thing we do as humans is give commands and allow it to go in one ear and out the other. We don't mean it. If our dog doesn't do it, we make an excuse not to do it. But what we have to do is we never give a command unless we know our dog's gonna do it or we can, or we are in a position and we will make him do it, okay? That's the basis for leadership. We're the leaders. Leaders are physically and mentally 100% leading the entire time we're working together and living together. So we also wanted to do German commands, so you can see me do a mix of German commands and hand signals as we move on. Pay attention, watch what I do, listen to my tone of voice, and let's go from there. How about you, Jack, you ready? For us, let's go. For us, and let's go, the same a command. It's our walking command. When we're walking, we want our dog to walk with us by our side, at least initially. My experience is if I've got a dog leash on a dog, my dog is always by my side. If he's off leash, it's another thing. So with Jack being on leash, he needs to be right here. If he starts to pull, I'm gonna tap the leash back to me and tell him, no, let's go. If he goes that way, no, let's go. That tap is a consequence. That is a correction for what some people like to call him. What it is is a physical reaction to him telling him he's not doing what I want. So I'll usually go fooey, let's go, and then immediately I come back to praise. On the flip side of that, I'm going to praise him. When he's doing what I want, I don't care if he's doing obedience or if he's just laying around being a nice guy, I'm going to find a reason to praise him. And when I praise him, I'm going to tell him, good boy, I'm going to pet him, I'm going to give him a treat at times, I'm going to give him a toy at times, and I'm going to give him a lot of positive emotion, okay? And I'm going to do that many more times during the day than I find a reason to bite. One thing about it is if he does something once, he's going to do it over and over again. If it's something we like, we put a word to it. Now we got a new trick or a command, and then we praise it as that part of motivation. If it's something we don't like, we've got to be ready to bite it. And it's not just with no, it's got to be a physical tap, tap, something like that, and then we move on. The more consistent we are, the more consistent he's gonna be. He wants to uh, be with us. He wants to be led by us. Dogs instinctively are pack animals. For us, okay, so good boy. He turned well with me, and we're walking. Seats, hand signal for the sit command. When I tell him to sit, seats, he must do it. Not gonna put him in a stay command. He needs to be in that sit command, okay? and he needs to hold it until I release it. So in this time, I'm gonna go here. Good, good boy. Here is for him to come and sit, break. And we go from there. Here and come are the same commands. Break, break it. When I break him, you see how he come to me. You see how I step back? I am trying to teach my dog that I am the center of the universe. That good things always happen when you come to me. If I'm busy in life, he comes to me, I'm still going to take the minute to pet him and love him because we want him to want to come all the time. So watch the hand signal, seats. Good boy. And he has to hold it. Move around. Here. And he sits. Good boy. Break it. Good. So the hand signal for the here command is just like this. We ask him to come. Now off leash, we don't tell him to come unless we know he's gonna come. So how do we do that off leash? We do it with his toy, we do it with his treat, we get his attention, we show it to him, he sees it. If what we have, if we, our toy or our treat is something that really motivates him, he's gonna turn and start to come and come to us. And when he starts to come to us and he's committed to coming to us, we're gonna take that toy, that treat, we're gonna bring it right here and then we're gonna give him that command. Because as he's moving towards us and is already committed in his mind and heart to come to us, we want to marry it with that command, that word, okay? 
When he gets to us, we're going to pet him, love him, we're going to release him. Right. Cheeks. Now from the side, plots. Hand signal just like that, the down command. It down, he has to hold it. In the sit command, I'm not going to keep a dog in a sit more than 30 seconds, a minute at most. In a down, I may keep him in much longer. The reason I don't do it for the sit is because I don't want to put undue pressure on their hips. I just got this thing about that, okay? But in a down, he can be comfortable. I will go blibe. Blibe is stay or wait, okay? And when I tell him to stay, he's going to hold that command. He can relax. He can smell the ground. He can chew a, a toy. He can go to sleep. He's in a chill moment, if you will. I never tell a dog to down stay unless I'm expecting him to be there for a little while. If I just tell him down, that is a powerful enough. I don't have to say stay with down or sit. But when I say stay, that means pack your bags, you're gonna be there, you don't have to pay attention. Okay, watch this, Break it. He comes to me, pet him, love him, comes right back around into working position. Very good boy, I'm proud of you. See, it's, it's a little warm out here, but he's gotta work anyway. Barras. So we're gonna walk around. Cheeks. Now, plots from in front. Beside us, it was like this. In front, it's like this. Good boy. If I wasn't talking to you, I would have phrased him right off. Seats. Good boy. Let's go. So now, the next thing I'm going to do is give him the place command. I think I will see if he wants a treat right now. He is. Sometimes he likes treats. Sometimes he doesn't. So if he wants to treat, fine. If he doesn't, that's fine. I'm still going to give him what? The tone the verbal, the physical, and let him know how much I love him. Bruss. Okay, buddy, here we go. Bet. Atta boy. And he wanted the treat. Saw how I gave the treat out of the cup of my hand? Good boy. The batting command is the place command. Lay down, sit down, stand up, read a book. I don't care what he does. We're not going to command him to do anything but the place, okay? And he can do whatever. He's good for this for an hour, two hours at a time, okay? It's not a big deal whatsoever. Break it. Let's go. And now another thing that we want to do, and owner wants to make sure he does it, is load up. So here we go. Load up. Hup. So load up is, or load is what they use. Hup is what I use for the German uh, version of that, okay? And that's what we do. When he does it, we praise him, okay? Have one more command is the seats. It's the foos command. Foos or heel. The heel is where he's in a box right beside me. It's our job to keep him in that box, okay? My hand signal is like this. Foos. We're walking. We stop. He sits automatically. He holds it. Okay, we're gonna do it one more time. Add a boy. Foos. So now I'm gonna turn the other way. And heck, I'm going to step off. See how he's trying to come back into the box? Good boy. I'm proud of you. Break it. Good job. So that boost command is nothing more than an exaggerated or a much tighter barras or let's go. I use that a lot when I'm in department stores or someplace or outdoor markets, someplace where I'm real close in with other people coming and going. One little tip, when I'm in a place that I'm going to meet others, I try to stay in between my dog and those other people and the other dogs. This guy doesn't mind other dogs except for when they get a little pushy. Don't even test it. Stay in between. Another thing this guy's got is a little cat thing. He's got one cat at home he likes, the other two he constantly wants to get at. What do we do? We tell him, fooey, no, and we bite him. We do our point, our best, to get him around those other cats initially with a loose leash so we can show him what we expect and we don't expect. We also praise the behaviors. The feeling he has when he's relaxed around them, we want to praise that. When he refrains from, he looks at a cat and refrains from going after him, we praise that. He's only going to understand what we want by us being consistent and letting him know that. A couple of other things that I was just thinking about that I forgot to show you. The hand signals for the baton and for the load up or hub command is a point. Right. So watch my hand signal. See, 
I didn't even need to say bet. He knew what it means, okay? He's real good on all the hand signals. I like hand signals because it teaches a dog to focus on. I think that's where we go. Everything we do, we do on leash to our dogs obeying us nine times out of 10 the first time we ask. When I say on leash, I'm not talking like this. I'm talking slack leash, okay? We don't want him to know that uh, or feel that tension. We want it to be loose. One of the things I'll do once I start walking, and I do this whenever I'm traveling with my dogs or walking with my dogs, I'll take the leash and hang it over my shoulders. No, I'm not being cute, but one of the things I'm doing is I'm showing free hands. He doesn't see it so that he gets used to the idea of staying with me and me not having a leash in my hand, for example. Dogs do learn in environments and scenarios, so what we want to do is try to make steps away from everything we do in a normal day to teach him he has to respond the same way all the time, and we always praise that behavior, okay? Remember, wait, stay, blive is the same thing. He sits at the doors, uh, he sits before he gets in vehicles automatically, okay? I appreciate it. My name is Jim Hodges. Number is 336-945-3232. Website, jimhodgesdogtraining.com. And Facebook is uh, Jim Hodges Dog Training. Thank you so much. God bless. One other thing, love your neighbor. Take care. Bye-bye.